Well, oh my gosh, y'all. <laughs> I know, I know. Believe it or not, I'm still alive. I know it's been months. I don't know what happened. Mental health hiatus? I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the last I remember, it was like just before, sp it was like spring break. And now it's July. So all I can say is life is hard and I'm tired. I, okay. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for um not hating me. I hope you don't hate me for abandoning you because I did. I didn't mean to, but I did. We'll get into why that happened in future episodes and what's been going on with me, but let's not talk about that today. Anyway, anyway, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. This is I Didn't Sign Up For This, and I'm Christy, and I'm your host. Ta-da! And let's see, uh, we'll go through all the housekeeping stuff at the end. I just, you know, welcome back. I missed you. I really did. So I thought that the current way life is going or, you know, what I'm doing in my life would be the best topic. So that's what we're going to talk about, um, which is how much I hate spring break and winter break and summer break and President's Day break and Good Friday weekend and all of it. Now, I know just a little bit of a, um, what's the word? Um, caveat? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know if that's right. But Please understand, I'm not speaking for all parents who have children with special needs. I'm not talking for all people who have special needs or anything other than myself and one other person. I know there's one other person out there who feels the same way I do. So I'm speaking for the two of us. And hopefully, I'm betting if there's two of us, there's more. So, you know, I'm going to speak for me and this other person. And then if you feel me, chime in, come on over and, and say, oh my God, me too. That's all I need to hear is an oh my God, me too. So anyway, I know when it comes to these breaks, um, especially those of my friends who are teachers, oh my gosh, you wait in breathless anticipation for these weeks. You have time with your family. You're going on trips and vacations. You get quality family time. Trips to the parks and the pool and museums and aquariums and zoos and I don't know, fucking Mars. I don't know. Today, I'm going to talk about what these weeks are like for families like mine. Families who have people in them that make outings terrifying, if not, you know, completely impossible I know I've talked about it many times, and I know I'm probably going to talk about it many times, what it's like to um, go places with my kids, especially Henry, and how difficult it can be, because I honestly, I can't express in minute enough detail how very difficult it is for us. And none of our kids are medically fragile or have transportation issues of any kind, or I don't know. I, I can't even think of anything else. But I know that our our kids, you know, kind of have it easy because it's mostly just behavior issues. Now, social media is great. I adore and spend way too much time on social media because I love reconnecting with people I haven't seen in like decades. And I love learning about their lives and seeing their families and what matters to them now. I love making new friends and like connecting with things we have in common and things we're rageful about and things we love. Um, I know... I love knowing that many of the people I might have lost forever to the fog of time, if it wasn't for Facebook, but, you know, I have the blessing of being able to interact with them again and remember why they were important to me in the first place and why I thought they were special and they were my friend and why I would continue want to want to be their friend. You know, of course, there's also those people that make you go, what the fuck was I thinking? That person is a waste of food and dumb as a box of hair. 
But there's probably people who think that about me as well. So I digress. I love seeing people's lives and their kids and what they love to do and what motivates them and what touches their souls. Love it. But here's my problem. And this is a disclaimer. This is my problem. Nothing I'm going to talk about is the fault of anything but my own brain. And I don't want anyone that I know to feel guilty or bad about what they share because this is on me. This is not on you. Okay. In my soul, I am truly thrilled for what people do and see and accomplish and how they move through life. I love it. I'm happy and thrilled for you. My brain, however, as we've previously established and we will continue to establish in the future is a big old mess. Okay. Now that I've said that, for us, this is how it plays out. Let's say it's summer, you know, like like it is. I've got Henry in summer school, which ends after this week, by the way. So just shoot me in the head. And my youngest boy has an afternoon camp that he goes to on most weekdays. And one day a week, that camp goes to the pool. That's it. That's our summer. Six weeks of summer school for one kid and a bunch of three week, three hours a day for the other. We go nowhere. We vacation not at all. We see nothing. <laughs> we barely leave the house. Our, our summer consists of waking up, making it through the day, hopefully with nothing getting broken and nobody getting hurt. And we go to sleep. Now understand, this is not me complaining. I am not complaining. I'm not looking for sympathy. This is just the way it is. This is the way it has to be. Even things we could do, like go for a walk or go to the park, or even I'll go to Walmart, which by the way, as far as Henry's concerned, is better than Disney World. We could just go to Walmart every day and he would be thrilled, but it's too much for one adult to handle. I cannot manage Henry and my youngest boy at the same time. I mean, you know, my youngest boy is pretty good. He's really very good, but he still needs attention and supervision. If I've got Henry, 100% of my attention has to be on him. Has to, because if it's not, there's no telling what he could do. Stuff comes off the shelves. He runs away. He approaches strangers and shoves his hands in their face. He might actually hug someone to the ground. And if we're somewhere with a lot of people or breakable items, this is what I do. I stand behind him. He is tucked into my torso and one arm is wrapped around his torso like a seatbelt because he can't be allowed to gain any ground away from me and I can't just hold his hand because then he's got that that whole area to the other side of him that he can wreak havoc on now if it's just me and Henry it's totally doable I do do it I do do ha 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 I'm a 12 year old boy I said do do that's totally doable if it's just me and Henry Add the youngest boy and it's, you know, it's still doable, but I can count on being completely exhausted when we're done because even though my youngest is very good, totally awesome, he still has questions or opinions or things to say. And I have to listen to him while keeping Henry under control and then answer him. It's, it's hard. And and if they're together, they have to be separate which means they can't be within striking distance of each other. Henry cannot be within reach of William or a literal physical altercation will ensue. Henry will hit him. Henry will push him. Henry will kick him if if the younger boy is within range. So, you know, and then younger boy wants to fight back, which, duh, of course he does. My eldest boy understandably wants nothing to do with this shit. He doesn't want to go out with them and me because of several reasons, I think. 
it's it's stressful for him to have to be involved and responsible for them too. And if he comes with us, he is because he's another adult. Also, you know, it's it's difficult to have everyone staring at us the whole time, even if they're staring at us positively because Henry's being cute and saying hi to everyone. People are still staring at us. And that's stressful when you're, you know, 18. And, you know, honestly, nothing they're doing, nothing the younger two are interested in would hold any interest for him at all. So my husband, even though he's a teacher, is dreadfully busy in the summer. He teaches summer school. Um, This year, he not only taught it, he wrote the curriculum. He usually does at least one play. Um, He likes to do, there are several groups that do not musicals, but straight shows. And they're like an hour away, each of these groups. Last summer, he did three shows. This year, he's only doing one show. So I send all praise to the heavens for that. But he also has other things he has to do. You know, I'm not going to get into them because that's his business. But, you know, we're kind of on our own most of the time. He's occasionally available for, you know, a zoo trip here or there. Or like Henry went recently to have um, dental work done under anesthesia. And he was available to go with me for that. So he's available for the important things. But we, you know, the little things not so much. So, you know, it all boils down to you kind of just do what you have to do, which is our life mantra, really. It can be kind of depressing and it can be very isolating, but mostly I'm okay with it because I'm really introverted and being around people. I know people who know me are like, you're not introverted. And I'm like, you don't know me. I am really introverted. Being around people drains the hell out of me. I can do it and I can do it in a way that people don't know that it's uncomfortable for me. But when I'm done, it's time to go to bed because I'm exhausted. But okay, this is where I have trouble. Because I'm isolated, I spend a lot of time on social media. I'm, you know, I read a lot of stories. I share memes. I love memes. I I love memes. I love gifts. Love them. I share that stuff. You know, I share pictures. I'm talking to people, commenting, whatever. And I see what everybody else is doing. I see the vacations we don't get to go on. And I see the trips we can't take. And I see the fun outings with the whole family, times at the pool and going to a festival or, (laughs) I'm sorry, that makes me laugh. I want to go to the festival. I'm sorry, I'm I'm a musical theater geek. Or, you know, visiting a petting zoo or seeing friends in their plays. That is something I would love to be able to do. Or just going to a park. It's all stuff that's awesome. And it's what's fa- what families should be doing when they're relaxing in the summer. Stuff I'm thrilled that my friends get to do. and But, you know, I'm a human being. I get jealous. It's hard to see because I get jealous, not because there's anything wrong with it. And not because, poor me, I don't get to do what they're doing. Oh, poor me. Everybody feels sorry for me. No. No, that's not it at all. I don't feel sorry for myself. (laughs) It's just we have a different reality. And truthfully, I have to say, it's not because I don't get to do what they're doing today. It's because I don't know if we'll ever get to do these things. Not just this summer, not just next summer, but ever. Because We have no assurance that Henry will ever develop to a point where we can take him out among people and relax enough to enjoy it. You know, because honestly, why go out and try it if there's a large chance it's going to go badly? That doesn't help anybody. Well, how is that relaxing? Because it's actually kind of hard and degrading and soul crushing to have to apologize to another family because your kid hurt their kid and your kid has no remorse just goes sorry 
<laughs> it's also really tense and exhausting to be so on your kid all the time to ensure that doesn't happen. So why do it? I learned in May, I learned something about myself that I didn't know. I will explain why I learned about it in the I didn't sign up for this segment in a few minutes. But after the incident I'm going to relate happened, I had an appointment with a therapist I used to see who's known me since I was like 18. So he totally knows my entire history, everything. He knows me. We talked it out and we talked about my life now and the difficulties I have and how I reacted to the incident I'm going to relate to you. And he told me that I walk through my life in a constant state of hypervigilance. Now, I've never heard that term before, but, you know, I could def I could pretty well define it because I know what vigilance means and I know what hyper means. But just to make it easy, here's a definition. People experiencing hypervigilance are unusually sensitive to the environment and the people around them. It is not a condition in itself, but it's a way of behaving that may be caused by trauma or an underlying mental health problem. When someone experiences hypervigilance, their subconscious is constantly anticipating danger. As a result, their senses are on high alert, ready to spot and respond to any danger. The situations they're trying to spot might be a physical danger, a repeat of a traumatic event, something wrong in a relationship. This super alertness makes people with hypervigilance feel and act as though there's always a threat around the corner. Normally, they're not responding to an actual threat. Rather, their brain is overanalyzing and overreacting to input from their senses. Hypervigilance can be a symptom of PTSD, anxiety, and other mental health conditions. End definition. And oh my God, yes. This is how I spend every moment of every day when I'm not alone. And that means when I'm with my children, when I'm with my husband, when I'm with my parents, when I'm with friends, when I'm with teachers, when I'm with any other human people in the world, when I am not 100% alone. I am constantly monitoring for incoming threats, physical from Henry, um, and emotional or psychological from the world. I can sense, this is, this is something that actually sometimes gets me in trouble with people is that I can sense the tiniest change in vocal tone or facial micro expressions that might indicate a change of mood or a problem coming from the person I'm speaking to. So if I sense it, immediately I'm on guard and I'm asking what's wrong or did I do something or are you, why are you angry? And I'm looking for an out. When I say those things, other people are like, what? I didn't. And I'm like, you did. You may not know you did, but you did. So um, when I have to be out in the world with Henry and there's a real chance that something could go wrong, which is all of the time, the hypervigilance is, it's doubled at least. Every movement he makes, every glance from a stranger coming in, every change in Henry's tone that could indi indicate he's upset and is going to start screaming, every time... I get an incoming eye narrowing or a brow wrinkling or a curled lip thrown my way. Every time that registers for me, it registers for me and it prepares me for some confrontation where I'm going to have to defend Henry or tell somebody to bugger off. Every time I feed Henry, when I feed him, he, every time he raises an eyebrow, every time he moves his hands, every time he moves his legs, I'm tensing and I'm preparing for an incoming assault or something like a hand right in my face. So as I, I said to my therapist, so that explains why I'm exhausted all the time. And he went, ah, uh, yeah, all the time. 
why I can't just be with Henry all day long, why I can't like go, let's go play, let's go color, let's go read a story that I can't do it. I can't. And why, why going somewhere is an exercise in serious risk benefit analysis. Totally. And why I can barely comment on people's posts about how awesome their summers summer is. I'm sorry. I'm jealous. I don't want to be. I'm sorry. I can't express how my soul feels for you. I don't ever want to begrudge anyone their time relaxing and rejuvenating and connecting as a family ever. I think it's wonderful and I don't begrudge it. Just understand that for those of us for whom your adventures are a dream, it's hard. I would love for us to take everyone on a plane and go to Disney or Cancun or the Dells. <laughs> the implementation of it, it takes an engineer. And since I don't really drink, I don't even get the delightful alcohol bath to drown out the anxiety it causes. So yeah, vacation time sucks. And that's not even factoring in the idea that when our children aren't in school or in their regular, they're not getting their regular routine, which, real blunt here, it fucks them up. If they're not doing what they're used to doing and they have free time <laughs> to just, they, they don't know what to do. It fucks them up. They want their routine. So when we get, you know, a five day weekend, for normal people, it's awesome. And, you know, let's go, let's go to the Dells for those five days. For us, it's a hellish nightmare of having that kid in the house for five days where they're not having the routine they're used to and they're looking for it and we can't give it to them. And then they go back to school. And it takes another period of time for them to get back into the routine they so crave. Mm. So it sucks. And avoiding the depression, the reality of our summer can cause is difficult as well. So depression is, is very real and very tangible for us. But... I'll stay. I'll stay carefully locked in my house, just counting from bedtime to bedtime in an attempt to just get through. Period. And, you know, hopefully I always have hope. I do. I always have hope. Someday we'll get to the point where we can do a little something, something small and not too intense that everybody can enjoy and won't ruin the adults. And I don't know what that is because everything that I can think of... <laughs> that the younger two would enjoy is a hellish landscape for the adults and vice versa. Because really, what is Henry going to get from going to see the Grand Canyon? Or, I don't know, what are things adults like? Let's go to Door County. What the hell is Henry going to get out of that? So, you know, stuff that he would enjoy is a nightmare for us. And I don't even get to go to the bar when it's done. I mean, I can have a drink, but, you know, whatever. Anyway, I don't need to get into that. So that's it for this week. And and what is it? Um, summer break hell. So. And now it is time for I didn't sign up for this. And this is not going to be pleasant because this was not a pleasant story. But I shall try to tell it as succinctly as I can and without collapsing into emotion as I am wont to do. So, okay, this is what was happening. We were in Peoria for my daughter's college graduation and we were at a hotel. We had two rooms in this lovely hotel. And we were exhausted. We had returned to the hotel after all the festivities, you know, the, what was it, like four hour graduation ceremony where the, oh God, the president of the universe, I have to say this, the president of the university gives a speech, which is basically 
as my daughter put it so beautifully, it was a three point speech. Number one, there are no jobs. Number two, robots have all the jobs. <laughs> Number three, don't forget to give us money. So I'm <laughs> really, really glad we were there for that. So we did that. And then we had, you know, picture time. And that was fun because there's nothing I like than a great photo shoot. That's my favorite thing. So I had great photo shoots with my daughter. But, you know, then we went back to the hotel and we were freaking tired. My husband laid down to watch TV and rest. And I laid down in the other bed to, um, I was playing a game on my tablet and I was resting. Henry was out in the, it was like one of those kind of business suites. There's a bedroom in the back and then there's the, there's like the sitting area. He was in the sitting area watching Disney Junior and he was running back and forth between the sitting area and the bedroom area. He threw a pack of butt wipes at me that hit me square in the face. My husband had stopped at a Willy Wonka, at uh, Charlie and the, Ch no, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory on the TV. And then he promptly fell asleep. Um, it was like the last from like Mike TV to the end of the movie is where we were. So I was, I was playing the game on my tablet. Henry was running back and forth. And you know, if something catches his attention, he's going to stay in that other room for a little bit longer. So I didn't, you know, it didn't register that whether or not he was coming in and out regularly. When the movie finished, um, it started again on this channel. So I set up to change the channel and, okay, I'm going to get Henry ready for bed. So I went into the sitting area and he wasn't there. Oh, I went back to the bedroom and I thought maybe he fell asleep on the floor and I didn't see it. He wasn't there. We had a connecting room and eldest and youngest boy were in the connecting room. I looked at the connecting door and it was closed from their side um, I knocked three times before the youngest uh, boy answered. And I'm like, where's Henry? Is he in here? And he wasn't in there. Our door to the outside was, you know, had the safety latch on. Their door to the outside did not have the safety latch on. I ran out the door and looked up and down the hall and he wasn't there. And I ran back inside and woke up my husband then to tell him I couldn't find Henry. So he bolted outside and we did a lap. Our, the, all, all of the floors are a big circle that are open to an atrium area and the dining area, the breakfast area, and you can see the elevators and everything. So it's just all a big circle. So we did laps around the floor and there no Henry. We ran back to the room and we, I called the front desk immediately to alert that our son with Down syndrome was missing. I uh, remember, I remembered what he was wearing and I gave that information. Um, my husband went to the front desk and I did another lap around the floor calling his name loudly this time. And for you, if you don't know me, you don't know what loudly is for me. Loudly is for me. Um, I, yeah, I can't describe it to you. No one down in the atrium, seeing and hearing me do this, asked any questions or offered any help. And I know they heard me because they couldn't not hear me. Um, so I ran back to the room. My parents were staying in the same hotel. So I thought to call them and alert them. And then the other phone rang and they had found him. <sighs> they had found him. I ran to the elevator to be there when they came up, but that the elevator that came, it wasn't them and they weren't coming up. So I ran to the closing door and I got to it just as it was finishing closing and I pulled it open. Um, the inner door had already shut. So I was just opening the outer door like the Hulk. And I realized uh, this was ridiculous. Um, so I ran from the side to side in the open atrium to see if, because from a certain angle, you can see the front desk. So I ran over there to see if I could see if they were coming up in the elevators that are 
glass on one side and um i saw them at the front desk and my instincts and (laughs) someday i'll tell this other story but i've had this feeling once before when i was not a hundred percent myself and i felt like if i could jump i would I, i could jump and make it and it would be fine but i'm not iron man and it was three floors down so you know thankfully better sense prevailed as i ran back to the elevators my mom came out of one and i fell on her i was in full blown i mean a panic attack like i've never had before i couldn't figure out how to call the elevator back i i I couldn't figure out how to do anything. She did it. We went in and that's when I started falling apart. When I ran out to him and he was sitting on the lobby carpet, bent in half, rubbing himself back and forth against the carpet. Completely unaware that anything was wrong. I'm sobbing. Uncontrolled, guttural sobbing. I kind of registered that a policeman was there. I'm keening. Um, All my focus is on getting him and holding him as closely as I can. And I'm crying all over him. The policeman is trying to get information out of me and I can't breathe. I heard him say, the policeman, that he was found outside of the hotel in the parking lot. I'm sorry, just for a second here, I, my, I started feeling like I was going to black out. Um, <laughs> the, it was kind of getting dark in from the, per- anyway, he was in the parking lot. He was crossing the street a couple times in the dark. People saw him and called the police. Y'all, he was out Sighed. He had left the room, called the elevator, went down to need to push one, went down to the lobby, walked out the front doors, wandered the parking lot and the street, and we didn't know. There were three adults between two rooms, and we didn't No. Now, okay, our hotel was in East Peoria. It is butted up on one side by the Illinois... The Illinois River. Next to a steak and shake at the very end of a very busy roads, um, stores, restaurants etc. Right next to an interstate. It took three days for my mind to stop obsessing over what could have happened. The Because the number of ways he could have died or been killed or abducted or just disappeared forever, would not get out of my head, would not get out of my head. We could have had to drag the Illinois River. As you can hear, when I have to relate this, I am still crying. (laughs) Um, I'm sitting here, I'm watching my hands shake. (laughs) so I felt and I don't know how many of you have experienced a situation like this but when it happens you well I because my husband didn't respond the same way because my husband is a much more logical rational let's figure out how to solve this type of person he doesn't he doesn't express emotion in the way that i do so it was it's like a knife edge 
you're right, you're walking a knife edge between handling the situation and losing your sanity. And as a mother, I don't, I mean, I don't know if other people are affected as deeply as you are, but I don't have words for it. And I'm sure anyone, especially <laughs> anyone who's been through something like this, and especially those who have not had a positive outcome, there aren't words for what you feel. There aren't, you, there just isn't, there isn't a language to express that nightmare. I am so thankful and so grateful for the way it turned out. Because what it could have been isn't, it isn't something I can, I can think about. Just reading it there, I had to, you know, you say a word and it goes through your, I don't know, your limbic system or whatever. But I mean, just saying those words out loud is the edge of what I can handle. I can't really think about what could have happened. You get raw, you get panicked. You lose your peace of mind, no matter how, <laughs> how um, not real that peace of mind actually is. And of course, the guilt. So this is why this is what had happened and the place it had put me in where I needed to go back to that therapist to discuss and process what I'd been through and why I reacted the way I reacted which, you know, to be perfectly honest, I don't think was necessarily so out of line. <laughs> I mean, anyone who thinks that they've lost their child and then has their child returned to them would probably react the way that I reacted unless they had some sort of sociopathic tendencies. But he's fine. And it motivated me to do some things we needed to do, like I went to a, um, I went to a website. Well, first I went to Photoshop <laughs> and created myself a tag that could be sewn on his clothing that has a QR code on it, which links to a web page I made for him. Um, and it has a QR code and it has his information, his name, his birth date, phone numbers, our names. Um, so if he were ever to get lost again, there's, you know, workable information right there. So I did that, got those ordered. I will link to that. I will put a pic, not link to it. I will, um, I'll add that onto the Facebook site so you can see what I did. And now um, those are being sewn on all of his shirts including his pajama shirts. I figured just shirts, I mean, I, they don't need to be on shirt and pants and shorts since he's always got a shirt on. Um, I want to figure out, I still haven't figured this out. Um, I would like very much, and this is me now going f all the way to the other end of being way too prepared. I would like to find a very small, almost undetectable GPS that I could put in his shoes so that if he were to be abducted for <laughs> some horrifying reason, he can be GPS located because they wouldn't think to look in his shoes for a GPS. There's other things that we're doing around the house to prevent him from ever getting out. But these are things that I've known were issues. But now, because this happened, I did something about them. So anyway, that is the horrible, I didn't sign up for this because nobody signs up for that shit ever. I hope and my prayer is that that never happens to any of you ever, period. So that is I didn't sign up for this for this week episode 12 hey um check us out check out the Facebook Facebook page at I didn't sign up for this and from there you can join the group there's a button that says join group join the group let's talk about this 
But hey, we would love it. I would love it. There is no we, there's just me. I would love it if you gave us a five-star rating, if you're feeling like it. <laughs> Buy me a coffee. On co you know, uh, Go to the link. I'm sorry. Relating that story has just completely turned me into a mush mouth, and I have very little brain activity. So <laughs> go to the Facebook page. From that page, you will find links to everything from visual aids to buy me a coffee to, you know, wherever you want to hear this podcast. And I have to stop talking now and go have some water. So thank you for coming back for episode 12. We will see you again. It will probably, oh, oh, I will probably be doing these not every week, but maybe every two weeks. And maybe that will prevent me from having to take a hiatus again. Love you guys. Hang in there. Talk to you soon.